So I got this viewer question on how do you actually calculate the CP and the CPK when there is only one specification limit, so a unilateral tolerance. Okay, let's make a video about it. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today's video is a bit technical about uh, CP and CPK uh, and how do you do it with two uh, limits on your specification, which is sort of normal, but also specifically on how do you then translate the same system into a unilateral tolerance or basically, you know, you have just one limit. Something has to be bigger than or it has to be less dense than. Uh, but there is no upper or, in the second case, no, no lower limit to this. And the basic principles of, of CPK, uh, they, they just continue, they, they are the same, um, but it has some consequences for, for how you do the formula. So let's check that, right? But before we do that, uh, let us go over a little bit of the, uh, the basic CPK, CP, CPK uh, type of um, calculations, uh, but also to, to get the feeling for it. So it's less about the actual calculation, but more about uh, what are we trying to do. And then I think that uh, when you see this in a picture, it will afterwards be very easy to translate it to the unilateral uh, specific case. So what we, what we normally see, uh, we have a, you know, some specification that, that goes up or down, and we have a lower and an upper specification limit. So a good product is a product that falls between these specs. If it falls here, it's okay. If it falls there, it's okay. If it falls here, yeah, maybe it's better, but it doesn't really matter. As long as it's between these specs, customer's happy. When it goes under, you've got a problem. When it goes over, you've got a problem. Now, what we generally draw, draw for this is a histogram type uh, of chart. and it's a, uh, I'm going to draw some normal distributions. Uh, but when we have a nice process, what we want is uh, most of our products falling nicely between these uh, lower and, and upper limits, because we know that any process also has some variation and it also has some spread. So we have a lot of products that we want roughly here, and uh, we know that there is spread. We hope it doesn't really go over these limits. So we have a, a process that has a distribution more or less like that. A lot of products that fall here, a bit fewer products that are slightly towards the specification limit, almost no products that are very close to the limit and basically no products. It might sometimes happen, but almost never that actually go over the specification limits. And if this is nicely normally distributed uh, and, and we say, well, this here is about 99, 99.7% of our products, then we have three standard deviations to there, three to there, so six standard deviations. This uh, process, will have, and we'll get to the calculation in a bit, but this will have a CP of one and a CPK of one. So what does it mean? Well, the normal uh, 99 and a bit percent of your distribution, it fits exactly within your limits. So 100%, one bell curve fits within these limits and it is nicely in the center. Now, let's also draw a pretty good, but not fully centered process to see how the CPK and the CP will, will differ, differ a bit. You see, this process has a much lower spread. And in fact, I think, well, it, it might even fit in here three times, I guess. So it would have a CP of about three but it is also closer to the upper specification limit. And in fact, if we check this here from the middle to the 99, so to, to the three standard deviations part, well, that fits in roughly twice. So while the CP, so can it even fit within, is at least uh, three, maybe even closer to four, the CPK, and the K is for how centered are we, or are we very, close to one of our limits, that's only two. Now I say only two because two is actually pretty good, um, but there is the, the difference between CP and CPK. CP checks, can I fit between two limits? CPK checks, 
how far am I from the closest limit? When we are going to talk in a bit about unilateral tolerance, where there is only one limit, I guess you can already feel that CP, that checks am I between the two limits, cannot be calculated anymore, but CPK can, so stay tuned for that. Another example, and um, this one, it should not happen too much in practice, um, but it is a good one uh, to at least know that it is possible and, and what it tells you. And that is, if we have, uh, let's say, a totally different type of, of process that is maybe in, in its basis quite good, but it's not performing. You see that the spread is even less than the basic purple one, but it's completely outside or almost completely outside of our limits. So this red process, um, we call it quite capable. I mean, this would have fit in here twice. So the CP is about two. And that is, that is nice. I mean, that, that is a world-class uh, process capability. Um, were it not for that, it is completely off-center. So this process, in practice, never makes good products because yes, it is nice and stable, but it's stable under our specification limit. So what happens here, and that is uh, maybe a bit counterintuitive, but the CPK for this one, we will check how far it is from the closest limit. Well, the lower uh, specification limit is closer. So we check how far it is from here, but because it is on the wrong side, it will become a minus. So this is roughly minus one CPK. This process is over our limits, or in this case under, but uh, it's on the wrong side of the limits. So when the mean is on the wrong side of our specification limits, the CPK will become negative. By the way, the same will happen if we have it here. Now, how do we get this in the formulas? Um, and after the formulas, we'll go to the unilateral example, uh, the, to that case, and, and you see how the same formulas will do the same things you just cannot use all of them. So the CP and the CPK, what they do is uh, they check the difference between your specification limits and the sigma. And the sigma is the standard deviation of how your product behaves. So it's the this parameter that we have, let's say the size of our product, um, if there is a lot of variation, so you have smaller and larger products coming off your line, you will have a big standard deviation. And here, as we said a bit, you know, this purple one has quite a big standard deviation. The green and red ones, they have a low standard deviation. Now let's take this purple graph also as an example. Uh, as I said, it should turn out to one and one, uh, but let, let's just you know, put some numbers on it, get a bit of a feel for it. Let's say this is the size of uh, a package that we are producing and, and it should be between 40 and 46 centimeters. And we also know that our uh, line is producing products that have on average a nice 43, 43 centimeter mean with a standard deviation of one. Our limits, 46 minus 40, upper minus lower supply limit, that is six, so that both have 40 in it. That doesn't really matter here. It's about the difference between the two, that is six. And we divide it by six times the standard deviation of our product, which is one, so six times one is also six. This here becomes six divided by six equals one. Now, if we take the same example, for our CPK. So we check to which of these um, specification limits is it going. We fill in basically the same numbers, right? Although here we have the mean of our product uh, distribution. So we will also have 43 in this mix. So what we basically have is uh, the, the mean of 43 or the lower supply limit that is 43 minus 40 is three, upper supply limit minus the mean 46 minus 43 is also three. We pick the lowest of these two. Well, 
the lowest of free and free is still free. So here also free divided by free, we have a CPK of one. Now, what you see happening in these formulas is that basically we pick here half of our specification tolerance, see that the same upper and lower specification limits are in there. And usually, well, not usually, but the ideal situation is that the mean of our process is also in the dead center between our specification limits. So basically this just divides the whole thing by half. And with our idealized production here, we see that happening. This is half of what was happening. This is half. And also below the divider, we take only half the number of sigmas because we basically say, how easily can half of the bell curve fit into half of the spe specification limits? So that's why we also have three sigma here. And when you have a nicely centered um, operation, nicely centered process, then you will get the same result again. But now when we go into the other examples, you will see that this one here, it also has exactly the same upper and lower supply limits. In fact, everything in this graph will have the same upper and lower specification limits. So the top half will always be six here, but it is about what is happening with the standard deviation. Now, as we said, this is a very low standard deviation. This is a standard deviation of what well, maybe one third or so. Uh, and this one also, and this one looks to be something like one half. But for these two, it means that if you do the six, but you divide it by six times a third, we get to two and we suddenly have a CPK of three, which is, uh, sorry, a CP of three, which is wonderful. But here you also see what will be happening. And the same happens for the red one here. What will be happening with the CPK? Because now this difference is not in the middle. And now suddenly it is not in the center anymore. So the CPK formula will start doing its thing. And when we have 44 here, suddenly these shift to 44 minus 40 is 4, 46 minus 44 is 2, and then the minimum becomes a 2. The bottom still is, well, half of this. Uh, it becomes 3 times 1 third, it becomes 1. And now suddenly we have a CPK that is still very good, but it is 2 divided by 1 or 2, and that is lower than the CP because it's not centered. Now the red one also has a CP of three because it also has the same small standard deviation. But here, what is happening is that we have a mean that is over this limit. And now we get into some, uh, well, not too funky, but uh, slightly funky mathematics where it becomes now out of seven and minus one, what is the smallest? Oh, yeah, minus one. So we get minus one divided by one. So we have a CPK that is negative. Now, this is all I told you before, right? It's outside of the limit, so it is a negative. It is never making uh, the, the product that we want. This one will have the same problem, but on the left side. So the uh, mean minus the lower specification limit will become negative. But this does give us what we need to, I think, now very easily calculate a, a unilateral tolerance, a single specification limit system. So let me draw that for you as well. Now over here, what I should add, this, this side is good, that side is bad. What we have here is only a lower specification limit. So that means that, well, something is going wrong in our formula, so to say. There is no upper specification limit. So we cannot do this part and we can also not do that part. Which means that this whole formula, uh, it doesn't compute. If this is zero, we can calculate it, but it's not zero it does not exist. So for a unilateral tolerance, a unilateral one specification limit, this one simply cannot be used. That one sort of becomes easier 
this part of the formula cannot be used, but because we have the lowest of these two, this now becomes the lowest of something we can calculate or something we cannot calculate, this will become de facto our CPK calculator. Now, of course, if we have one upper specification limit without a lower specification limit, this flips around. Right? So in that case, this part of the formula falls away and this part will be calculated. But for the example I drew, so we only check the lower specification limit. And the means of the purple and the green graph, so those products, basically the same that we had here and this one, they are higher than our uh, specification limit, the one that we have. And we detract from that mean the lower specification limit, we get a positive number and we divide it by the standard deviation of this process. And you know, some quick numbers in it again. Here we expect that you know, this, this difference that you have here uh, will be roughly three standard deviations for the purple one and will be, well, roughly six standard deviations of the green one. So these are CPKs, again, of nicely one or two. The red one is on the other side of the specification limit. So again, and, and this is why I said, when you check just the formulas, uh, you might think with just one specification limit, ah, I will take this difference and I, I make it a positive. But if you first see this, it becomes so clear that you say, well, this mean here is lower than. So we have a mean that is lower than the lower supply, the lower uh, specification limit, which means that this whole term will become a negative. So it will be th the same that we had happening there, a negative part above the divider. And then, well, this one also has quite a nice tight spread. Uh, so you divide it again by, by a low number like, like one, but it will become a negative CPK. And that is how you use well, both in the traditional setting and in the unilateral setting, the CP and the CPK calculations. So they can become negative and you have to be slightly more aware when you're doing unilateral that you check the correct side of that one specification limit. And we just have to accept that there is no CP, there is no PP. We only have the formulas that we can use for the K versions, so the CMK, the PPK, and the, um, and the CPK. Well, I hope that this clarified things. Uh, I know it was, it was quite technical, quite in on the formulas. Uh, maybe this was already uh, common knowledge out there, but I, but I do hope that uh, this little refresher uh, triggered some things and just, you know, made you perhaps also feel good that what you already sort of sensed but weren't too sure about does actually happen in this way. Uh, if you did like it, do uh, hit that like button, let me know. And uh, don't hesitate to write me any comments down below. Tell me what other parts of you know, Six Sigma or the other formulas that we use in the continuous improvement sphere, would you like me to explain anything that you know, is a bit difficult for you that might benefit from something like this? Uh, do let me know. I'll be happy to make videos about those too. For now, I wish you the best of luck improving the capability of your processes. And as always, don't forget to enjoy the improvement journey.